So for those of you who have not uh, met uh, Luca yet, let me say that he did his undergraduate studies in Rome in Italy. Then he came to Leiden to do a PhD and uh, he's working on dynamic, uh, you know, random walks in dynamic random environments. Afterwards, he went to do a postdoc in, uh, in, the, in Zurich. And we managed to recruit him back when the networks program started. And so that was uh, wonderful that he came and he spent uh, almost the entire networks program with us. And recently he moved to, uh, to Florence where he's now a professor running uh, you know, a, 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 a probability group there and making a splash, as I may say. I mean, uh, sooner, very soon, also Florence is going to be one of the major probability centers in the world. So um, Luca is going to talk about uh, random walks and consensus dynamics on directed random graphs. Thank you, Frank, for uh, so much kind work. And uh, thanks all of you, welcome back. Uh, no worries if you fall asleep. Uh, I understand it's after lunch. And uh, thanks, uh, really much appreciated uh, to the organizer and to the all Indian community. It's a great pleasure for me to be here for the first time. And I hope this will be the first of many other times, let's see. Um, as Frank uh, said, uh, today I'm going to discuss questions, a recent project about uh, trying to understand random workflow in directed uh, networks. More specifically, a uh, question of meeting of random walk and uh, uh, implication for uh, consensus dynamics, opinion dynamics, on sparse random uh, graphs uh, directed. That's perhaps uh, the main uh, novel aspect of the story. And uh, let me gradually recap a bit the link between uh, random walk theory on the finite graphs first and uh, uh, consensus dynamic. So I will discuss, first of all, a very classic, or perhaps uh, the most simple, one of the simplest model of opinion dynamics on the Markovian dynamics on a graph, uh, what is called the Volter model, uh, according to, for example, Likert's reference, classical reference. So setup for the moment is, uh, uh, let's take a finite network, G, uh, N is the number of nodes. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to discuss here is an undirected graph, but all I'm saying in this initial part can be lifted to a directed weighted graph. Uh, for simplicity, I'm discussing a picture with an undirected setting first. So we have our graph. Uh, what is the Volder model? Volder model is uh, this Markov process uh, uh, that as such an infinitesimal generator and this evolution that I better explain with the picture, it's very simple dynamics. So here it is, we start with the given finite graph, we assign a blue or red type to each node, uh, you may think of uh, political uh, Republican versus the whatever. So two opinions or two alleles in a genetic context, uh, depends what you're interested in. So we start with a graph with assigning a per node a color, an opinion, red or blue, two opinions. And then the evolution is described by this sentence. So each node has its own exponential clock. When this clock rings, what it does, so for instance, let's say this is the first node that this clock is ringing. And what it does, the ringing node, it chooses uniformly at random one of its out neighboring uh, nodes. So for example, this one, and then he simply adopted the opinion, the color that was in his, uh, of this guy. So that's the simple mechanism of the voter dynamics. Uh, this keeps on going, uh, the next time another clock rings and so on. And since we are on a finite graph, uh, this is a Markov chain uh, and the graph, let's assume it's connected, or if you like, indirectly, it is strongly connected. So this is an irreducible Markov chain, a finite Markov chain. And we realize very simply uh, immediately that there are two absorbing states, the monochromatic configuration that in a, uh, in a political consensus framework would correspond to consensus. Either we are all blue or we are all red, something in, perhaps impossible in life. But anyhow, on finite graph, that's what has happened to this Markovian dynamic. We will be sooner or later in finite time trapped in one of these two absorbing states either the red or the blue configuration. And uh, now question, nature of question for this dynamic, depending on the irregular geometry that we have, uh, we are considering, 
natural question is, can we put the finger in understanding the distribution of this time, the first time that this system, regardless of where it started, will converge to this uh, consensus uh, uh, configuration, one of the two. So this is the so-called uh, consensus time for this dynamic. It's almost surely finite because uh, the space is uh, finite, otherwise it would have been different. And now the natural question is, okay, that's uh, not that informative. Sooner or later we will reach consensus, but the question is how do the system reach consensus? So this question uh, can be analyzed at a different level of depth. So let's start to analyze, uh, first of all, the structure of this uh, Markovian system. Why is it related with the outer and the workflow in the network? So let me recall you briefly a very classical coupling construction of this uh, uh, voter dynamic. Uh, and it, uh, this is a so-called graphical construction that can be applied to essentially most of Markovian particle system on a graph. So for the voter model, it's rather simple. So this picture you should image here uh, this is the space, okay, this is a piece of Z, if you like, but what I'm saying, you can picture it for any other graph, so just for simplicity of the picture. And this is the time evolution. So how can we sample this uh, Markovian evolution dynamics? There's a beautiful coupling construction that only requires you to consider independent sequence of Poisson clock uh, that we place on every directed edge. So you see here on each edge, there is either sequence of arrows pointing to one uh, direction or to another. We place on each directed edge this sequence of independent Poisson clock. And this is uh, the source of randomness is rich enough to put the finger really on the, on, the, uh, on the evolution of the voter model dynamic I was describing you before. In fact, uh, this dynamics, uh, if eta t and eta zero represent the state of the, uh, this uh, Markov system at time t or time zero, through this Poisson arrow, we can trace back the origin of each opinion by simply following backward the, these Poisson arrows that will tell us at time t, for instance, at this state here, where this opinion came from. Well, this was adapted by this neighbor guy by this neighbor guy, and if we trace back at the, or at the origin until time zero, we do understand where this guy, this opinion came from. The individual two convinced, in a sense, a sequence of individual, and at time t, the individual one carry the same opinion as the same guy. So this is a very simple, a beautiful, I would say, and powerful coupling construction. And in particular, of course, is linked to random walk because this is a way to sample a simple random walk path in this graph. And more than that, uh, we saw it, for instance, in Anita's talk, a uh, similar thing. I mean, this is the simplest setting. If we look backward in time, this uh, the very same Poisson arrows, this is nothing but a way to construct what are called coalescing random walkers. So we simply look backward the same picture. If we initialize, for instance, at, at each time t here particles, and you know, when these particles coalesce, they keep on traveling together. So this is a system of coalescing random walk. And we do understand simply that looking back for the voter model, it's the dual in this sense, if you like, you can make even more precise uh, this, uh, this uh, algebraically, this, uh, this type of duality, why this co coalescing random walk are related to the, the evolution of this opinion dynamics. And in particular, we do clearly understand that if we look backward the coalescing random walk, by the time that all these random walkers have coalesced into one, this gives an upper bound. So this is the coalescence time of this end random walker. This gives an upper bound for this consensus time dynamics. So if you look at backward, this coalescing random walk, that means they guarantee all the opinion have crystallized to the monochromatic configuration due to this individual that converted all the, the population. Of course, this is true just because we are on a finite setting. And in particular, to run the walk, we'll admit that the setting is irreducible, the graph in finite time, and in particular, they will all coalesce sooner or later. So that's a bit, uh, to explain you briefly, to recall, if most of you perhaps are familiar with this construction, the link between the voter opinion dynamics and Markovian opinion dynamics and run the workflow in a network. Now, 
Let me refresh you. Uh, so, so why is this a inequality and not equality? It's not an equality because uh, you're not granted the, uh, well, it might be that consensus is reached a bit earlier, if you think for a moment about it. So for sure, do you see the, 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 the inequality, the bound? Okay, then uh, if you think for a moment how it proceeds uh, forward, uh, it's not granted that uh, consensus coincides with, with coalescence, but actually they are, uh, uh, well, I will come back to, to that uh, uh, later more precisely, but as are essentially the same in distribution, I'll come back to it. For example, for example, yes, that's a, that's a, yes. Remco is giving an example where there's a consensus, but there's not the entire coalescence, right? Yeah. So for instance, two branches, they reach the monochromatic configuration, but only coming from two individuals instead of a single one. Yeah, that's an example that's why. Um, anyhow, they are almost the same, you'll see. Uh, in most of geometries, because uh, in fact, uh, this type of dynamics has been understood for a long time, uh, first of all, on the simplest type of geometry, that is the complete graph. So the mean field picture, and this actually has been used a lot in uh, genetic population models, uh, as Anita discussed today, a more complicated version of this. Uh, uh, but in the simplest uh, 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 setting of the complete graph, this is called sometimes the Moran model. And was clearly understood for the Moran model, you have a very simple binomial structure. You can compute essentially everything and put the finger on the very refined properties. The nice thing is that the picture that we understood for a long time, even backward, is related to King Wang coalescence and, uh, and so on. Well, for those that are familiar with this type of object. But recently, there have been uh, essentially uh, two. Uh, works in which they extended all this theory that was known for the complete graph uh, for sequences of growing graphs under certain conditions. And that's what I want to discuss now, what is uh, appearing and building in these years, this mean field theory for growing uh, graph for voter dynamics. In particular, let me discuss two specific results, but in particular, to link coalescence, consensus, and random walk flow, there is a crucial quantity that is uh, this object, uh, the meeting of two independent random walk starting from the stationary measure. Uh, we are in a reducible setting. There is a unique stationary measure. And uh, it turns out that this specific random variable plays a crucial role in uh, solving all the issue of voter dynamics and so on. Let's see why. Um, now, I, I said that this was true for the complete graph, but now has been extended under a certain notion of mean field conditions that I summarize here uh, roughly with these two points. So this mean field condition for which the theory of the complete graph can be extended can be summarized by saying in a so growing sequence of graphs, right? So now we are familiar with this concept. Uh, we have seen it a, a number of times. And uh, these uh, mean field conditions can be summarized first uh, by saying uh, mixing time of the random walk, so the time it takes the random walk to get as close as you like to equilibrium. If it's a scale, uh, if it's uh, much faster than the meeting time, so if this ratio of the expectation of this random variable, that's one of the conditions that says, uh, so for instance, on the complete graph, uh, the mixing time is uh, order one. After uh, uh, two steps, uh, you, you forget where you started and you are at equilibrium. And the meeting time, you will see the expectation of two random walk is of order n. So one over n goes to zero. But even if it's not of order one, the mixing, but uh, scales and it still uh, doesn't uh, scale like the, it's faster than this meeting, then we are in what is called, uh, what I will refer to mean field geometry. The second requirement is that this invariant measure is not too concentrated. For instance, if you think a setting where the invariant measure is uniform, that's fine. So we should avoid simply something like where there's some sub region of the graph where all the mass is there. Uh, these are the two conditions for which we can extend the theory of the complete graph. And in particular, let me recall a beautiful work by Roberto Embuzeiro Oliveira, who did a series of work on this recently in generalizing this Kingman coalescence and so on. 
So let me recap only this result, which is perhaps uh, is key to me for my uh, for what I want to highlight today. So namely that the coalescent time of the of the voter dynamics normalized by this sequence. This is the deterministic sequence, right? The expectation of this meeting time of two random walks from stationarity. It shows that this random variable uh, normalized at the scale of this meeting time converged to some of uh, uh, some uh, exponential that can be interpreted genealogically as the rate at which the branches of the coalescence essentially uh, emerge. And uh, yes, this is uh, the sequence of the graph going to infinity, but even for a sequence of deterministic graph, doesn't have to be random at this point. But yes, sequence of graph where the volume n is the number of nodes close to infinity. I don't understand what the, how the edges of the graph are changing. The edges of the graph are, non are not changing, are static. It's not like the setting of Anita. No, no, no. It's whatever graph sequence of finite graph under these two conditions, for which you know that the mixing time is uh, scales uh, before the meeting and the invariant measure is not too concentrated. These are the assumption of whatever graph that satisfies those two assumptions, you're guaranteed that the coalescence time is of the order of the expectation of the meeting and converge to this random variable. And in particular, if you see in terms of mean, uh, well, this means that the entire system of random walker to coalesce is nothing but twice the meeting of two random walker from stationarity. So once two guys meet from stationarity, essentially you have to wait twice this uh, order of time and you're guaranteeing this geometry where the flow, in a sense, flow, uh, uh, yes? So for the second point, I guess, Definitely. It's not Definitely. Okay. And, and now I'm not even quantifying precisely this because I want to set two results in which the, 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 the assumptions are slightly different, but more or less equivalent. Uh, in fact, ah, and by the way, so this clarified the link between coalescence time and meeting time. But a very similar result uh, consider uh, if you replace this T coalesce uh, to get back to your question, if you consider the ten consensus time, it happens a very similar co convergence, but with a random variable that doesn't start by from two, but starts from uh, something else. And so it's slightly more different uh, because of what we, we were saying before with Remco that uh, there might be some discrepancy. And the uh, second thing I want to discuss uh, is uh, uh, consensus time in voter dynamics, uh, if we look at the blue opinions, uh, let's say one of the two, the density of the blue opinion, what it happens, why is it important, this quantity, the meeting time uh, from stationarity to run the walk? Because if we speed up time by this quantity, what happens is that this system only at this time scale of the meeting time converges to a diffusion, uh, the right fish diffusion that we saw also this morning. And uh, so right fish diffusion, uh, well, if you're not familiar, I mean, perhaps you picked up something from uh, tomorrow, uh, this morning, but it's nothing but the Brownian motion with the uh, variance uh, that fills uh, the state of uh, this uh, density of opinion. In particular, this in a genetic context uh, can be called a genetic variability. This is the variance uh, if you want, uh, uh, if you take two individuals from an infinite population, you ask yourself what's the probability that they have different uh, uh, types. So that's what is called genetic variability and speed up this Brownian motion when it's around a half. And then when you start to, cons uh, to go in, uh, you know, uh, in, in a sense, uh, uh, speed up or slow down, depending on whether you are reaching consensus or not, uh, this diffusion. But the interesting thing is that this diffusion uh, kicks in only at the scale of this uh, meeting time. Uh, here, you can see a picture. Don't look at the orange one because it's uh, another work that we did recently with Frank and other. Uh, with, th th there's some uh, interesting phenomenon that we studied. But uh, here is just a picture. The blue line, it's really the right fish diffusion. Uh, it's a simulation in the context of a deregular random graph. And essentially, this uh, the starting part is not at all a diffusion. It's only at the time scale of the meeting time that then it kicks in uh, this diffusive behavior and that we see really that uh, the system is reaching one of the 
chromatic, uh, uh, monochromatic configuration consensus. This is just to give you a flavor in a simulation that you can really, for a finite system, see this behavior that we prove uh, uh, in a limiting sense. Okay, having said so, I think, I hope I convince you that it's important to look at this quantity for several reasons, the meeting time of two random walk, uh, for instance, to understand consensus dynamics. So let me discuss what is known about this sequence in general, uh, what has been known so far. So first of all, uh, for sequence of deterministic growing graph, uh, was known uh, actually for a long time, Aldous and Field proved, uh, for instance, for the complete graph, uh, the true mean field, let's say, uh, setting that uh, it's equal to n essentially, well, a half n minus one. Uh, similarly, uh, on the d dimensional uh, lattice has been proven usually in mathematics, uh, first geometry we study are regular geometry, complete graph, uh, 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 d dimensional lattice. And that's actually what has been done for a while. And uh, in the case of ZD, again, uh, this uh, scales like uh, order n, this meeting uh, time uh, for, for d bigger than three, there's this log correction in uh, dimension two. These are results by Cox. And then uh, for a while, uh, this quantity also for other reasons was uh, studied, uh, um, was uh, made clear how this meeting time uh, behave only on these geometries. Then uh, people started to be interested in understanding what happens in uh, other sort of geometry. And uh, the next result that came, uh, well, in a sequence of work, uh, uh, originally by Cooper and Fritz, for instance, in 2010, they proved that on a random D regular graph, uh, they could prove again that this meeting time of the random walk from stationarity, so here I put it a P because there's the extra randomness of the environment now, so with that probability, that means uh, this expectation scales again like the volume, like N, uh, with a pre-constant that depends really on the D regular, on the, how many uh, neighbors each node has. And this was the picture until recently. And the interesting thing here is that these are all regular examples. And the thing is, okay, can we go a bit beyond that? And uh, uh, very recently, one of our collaborators that I have to say was one of the true driving force in this sequence of projects we're doing, Matteo Quattropani, who did a PhD in which he studied a lot of this type of question, in particular, some tool that we used a lot to, to crack the problem I'm about to discuss. Uh, he moved a bit out of the deregular setting, uh, of a regular setting, because he considered a random graph that was only out deregular and with the in degrees. So he started to consider half. So say a directed setting, and the integrals could have uh, some variation, uh, so being non-regular. And it really proved, again, that this type of result, that this scales with the volume, uh, but uh, it could do it in a very simplified version of the model. It was not truly the Volter model, but was CA cellular automata. So it was a parallel dynamics, uh, then in a sense, it's much uh, simpler in this setting uh, to be studied, uh, and that's why they could uh, go slightly beyond the, the, out, uh, the, the uh, regular context. Uh, but this was th this work was uh, uh, made as uh, when we started. Uh, so Matteo is now in uh, in uh, Rome, postdoc uh, Matteo Quattrovani. This is, I forgot to say is a joint project with uh, my lovely collaborators uh, Raja Tazdra from Leiden, Federico Capano is a PhD. We are co-supervising uh, with Raja based in Leiden. So, and Matteo was a postdoc when I was uh, in Leiden, uh, and together we started to look at this type of question in uh, less regular or less uh, setup. And that's in fact what I want to discuss today, that we recently uh, finished up this paper uh, in which we characterized the meeting time of two random walks starting from stationarity on the context of sparse random digraph uh, with even irregular degree structures. Now I will discuss that. And in particular, we made very clear that even in this uh, type of mean field geometry, uh, I will work under mean field condition, uh, this meeting time still scale of the order of the volume, order n, but we characterize explicitly the constant as a function of the degree sequence, which has a nice implication because we can start to really understand our random workflow in directed networks uh, where the degrees are very regular. So that's what I would like to discuss about now in the 
in the second part of the talk. So this was a bit of a survey. And uh, let me tell you that there are a number of uh, work, there's lots of activities in this area in these recent years. And uh, the thing that in this type of mean field geometry, and actually parts uh, with the local weak limit that we saw in some talk, uh, that for instance could be a tree, a Galton Watson tree, has to be expected that this, the, this meeting time uh, scale like order n for several reasons that, uh, for instance, already Aldous and Duret uh, understood. The main point is can we put the finger explicitly on the pre constant? Because this is truly informative of specific uh, network setting. And, uh, and in fact, uh, yeah, recently, and there are even a sequence of uh, ongoing works uh, from ourselves and from many other people uh, around this team now. Okay. So having said so, now I want to dig in uh, into this result, our main result. So meeting time of two random walk on sparse random uh, directed graph. Um, yes, so sparse random directed graph, let me specify, we have to consider a model that produce random digraph, random directed graph. And we choose to consider this model that is uh, beautiful, adaptable, flexible, we already saw this morning by Frank, uh, the configuration model. Uh, Remco wrote two fantastic books about, uh, well, about many of these ensembles, but in particular, there are chapters uh, with lots of properties of the configuration model in the undirected setting. Uh, what I will consider now, I will refresh you a bit uh, how these things uh, can be also uh, explored in the directed setting. Uh, this has been uh, recently explored by a number of authors. So let me... First of all, tell you, so what's the point? We want to construct a graph, a random graph ensemble that produce graphs that have the degree sequence we want. So how do we do that in the configuration model? We implant, uh, we, we take the, the, the degree sequence that we want to have. In particular, we are in a directed setting here. So I will talk about a bi-degree sequence. So for each node that we decide how many in and out neighbors we want to force to, uh, these nodes to have. So we start to this sequence and we are working under three main assumptions here. The very first assumption is needed just for uh, consistency of the model that the total number of in and out degree is sum up the same so that you can really uh, create a, a, a such a random graph. Um, second assumption is tricky and is different from the, uh, slightly different from the underrated setting so that you have to require that uh, the minimal degree is at least two and this is sufficient in a directed setting to guarantee that the, the graph that you will produce with high probability is strongly connected. So for instance, you have a unique invariant mesh. Uh, in the underrated setting would be three instead of two. The third assumption that is the most stringent, if you like, that would drastically change the picture. Because you, you come in through an edge. Yeah. You have two further edges to go out. Yeah. That's exactly the same. I'll come back to that uh, in a bit uh, when I state the results. But yes, good point. Uh, then third last assumption that perhaps is the most stringent uh, its maximal degree that we are uh, assuming, actually we can slightly go beyond this because there are some recent work that allow us to go beyond this, but we are simply assuming now uh, for the statement I will state that are order one. So in particular, this guaranteed number of total edges is of the order of the volume. And in particular, that's why we are in a sparse setting and this has lots of implications that I'll discuss. Uh, so how do you con do construct this uh, random graph uh, with the degree sequence you like? Uh, it's beautiful, the, the, the configuration model, because uh, you just attach to each node all stops according to the list of degree sequence you wanted to place there, and you then just take a uniform matching of these sets of uh, all stops. In particular, you can even do it recursively. You proceed one by one. You pick a random thing. So this is an exchangeable construction. So you can check it. It's very simple. And that's perhaps the beautiful power of this model that you can really study in detail. So you start matching each alt stub with the companion, a tail with a head. OK? So in a day, undirected setting is similar. Here we have it in this pair of things. And you end up producing possibly a multigraph 
with the desired degree sequence, by degree sequence, in and out. Then you can even study that uh, with high probability under certain assumption, actually, uh, you can study what's the probability of being simple. And the conditional of being simple, it's even uniform over the simple graph. So this is a powerful thing that you can truly use this model even to sample, if you like, from a simple random graph with the degree sequence you want. I hope it's clear and perhaps you're all familiar with this model. I just wanted to refresh and uh, because it's in a directed setting that is new studying property of this object. So let me in fact now discuss what do we know of the geometry of this sparse random graph. So in Renko's book, uh, you will find a very similar property in the undirected setting. And now has been made quite clear now a number of uh, refined property also in this directed setting for this geometry. So here I'm calling, I'm recalling most of uh, briefly uh, without entering a detail, each work has its own uh, specific assumption. But let's say this geometry, first of all, is a sort of a small word, if you like geometry, that the diameter or the typical distances to you pick two nodes and you say, what's the typical distance between there at random? And this grows like order log n, and n is the volume. So this is a, a way to say this is a measurement of this small world phenomenon. Um, cover time is also of order n log n. For the geometry, Pim uh, contributed to this, uh, also Cooper and Fritz. Matteo did it during his PhD thesis with Pietro Caputo. Uh, they've been working a lot on this. And uh, as we saw this morning, uh, uh, this geometry actually asked for the undirected companion is locally tree like uh, you can study the local weak limit, but if you like, without entering the local weak limit, that simply means you study the neighborhood of a, of a, whatever, of, a, uh, of a given vertex and up to say order log n with high probability you will not encounter cycle. So this means in a sense that you are locally tree like and you can really couple the uh, local neighborhood of each node with the Galton Watson tree with the tree. Uh, in which case, in this case, would be directed tree. Here I pointed this result uh, uh, for out uh, directed tree. You can have a similar thing for the uh, in degree structure. Now, something that is really non trivial, that there actually there's still uh, some work about it, characterizing the invariant measure in a directed setting. This is perhaps something that is much more difficult in a directed setting than in an undirected setting. And directed setting period, we know explicitly the invariant measure uh, we, in terms of the degree sequence. Uh, directed setting, no, we don't know in explicit formula, uh, though there are very interesting recent work, uh, here I mentioned them, which they study, essentially we know that it exists, it exists it's unique under a strong irreducibility assumption, and uh, at least they have some uh, uh, control, quantitative control on Pi max and pi min, so the mass, minimal mass and maximal mass that is achieved by this unique invariant measure, even if we cannot characterize it explicitly. And in particular, uh, for this setup, I'm saying is uh, not too concentrated, uh, uh, to get back to the point I mentioned before. Right. Now there is another interesting thing, a very, very nice sequence of work. Actually, now there is a beautiful work by, recent work by Sales that is truly understanding uh, finally what cutoff means. Because I think this is, uh, so cutoff, uh, okay, I will discuss it very briefly, I have no time. Uh, so first of all, it's a question of understanding mixing time. This type of graph are expander graph, and for expander graph, uh, whatever means, uh, it means, uh, if you like, uh, random workflow is good. Uh, I don't want to discuss now expanding uh, properties, uh, but for expander graph, a mixing time of the random walk uh, is of order log n. This was known for a very long time by algebraic proof and so on. Now, in certain uh, graph setting, we truly understand that the Markov chain sometimes show a cutoff phenomenon that is an abrupt change of behavior from being very far from equilibrium to drastically being very close to equilibrium that in asymptotically under the proper scale of the mixing time, you will see a step function. That's what it is, uh, the cutoff phenomenon. This has been recently proven for this directed configuration model, a very neat, uh, uh, strong statement of this mixing cutoff type thing, actually even more explicit than what is known in the undirected setting. For, so 
Directed setting is more complicated for certain reasons, but it's simpler for other reasons because in a directed setting, locally, if you're sparse, you don't see cycle, you can use path counting argument. Uh, that becomes very horrible in an undirected setting. Uh, the combinatorics is much more involved. No, in fact, uh, I wouldn't say so. Well, perhaps this I'll discuss it later, but if I have time, because for many years, uh, people were proving cutoff for certain Markov chain and saying, okay, but what is the reason for the cutoff? And I would say that we still don't know this. We are understanding a lot, and recently, Justin Sales, I invite you to see his recent work in which he proved if and only if condition to have a Markov, for a, brand, for a graph setting, a Markov chain to have a cutoff. So at least he has some entropic view on uh, if and only if condition that guarantee why there's this abrupt. Then intuitive mechanism, I think is still blurry there and uh, needs us to explore with more example and understanding the reason why. All right, this was a recap. I have still, uh, sorry, Frank, I, it's until four, right? I have to... Yes, right? <laughs> All right, so if you stay, uh, I hope you're still with me. So I discussed the recent results on the geometry of this uh, random directed setting, sparse setting. Uh, one question. Uh, Please. What is M in the dx by M? M here is nothing but the number of edges, if you like, the times two. Interesting. Yeah, so it's the sum of the in or the out degree, M. Uh, oh, oh. Number of edges, number of edges right? Not the, no, right, sorry, yeah. it's the number of edges. The factor two is the, yeah, yes, yes, the number of edges. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, here I don't want to, uh, here there's an interpretation uh, of the entropic time, uh, whatever. Did this, I refer to this work of Justin that are beautiful. I really suggest you to look at, at them. Uh, okay, having said so, this was enough for us when we started the problem uh, to, this, to research in this problem to crack our goal, let's put the finger on meeting, finally, literature and all our colleagues made effort. We have a puzzle, perhaps we can really put the finger on something non-regular. And in fact, uh, that's what we did. This work is already on archive, uh, has been accepted that this week we have to prepare revision and also applied probability will appear soon. Um, and. Uh, that's the main theorem we have. So we put it, the finger on the law of this meeting time starting from stationarity uh, of uh, two random walks on this uh, directed uh, run configuration model with high probability. What did we prove? We prove essentially that, uh, well, if you like, we proved the, exactly what is the pre-constant of the meeting time. Actually, we proved both. We proved that uh, this meeting time under proper scaling uh, with this constant times n converts to an exponential. And uh, this sequence, this constant, is an explicit functional of the degree sequence. OK, this may look an awful formula, but there's a very neat interpretation that I will now discuss. Uh, because I think it says a lot also for applied people, uh, as I will try to convince you. So what are these numbers? So first of all, this sequence is of order one sequence. May converge or not, it depends on the regularity of the degree sequences that you're choosing. Now, you see this is a bit of an awkward, awful formula with some parameters, but these parameters, they some, in some sense, they have an interpretation. So this first parameter is a density parameter. The second the parameter is somehow the second moment, if you like, controlling the variance of the in-degree distribution. This parameter, which is very crucial, play, is a measurement of the, how much Eulerian or not is the graph. So how much variability is between the in and out degree. Uh, the fourth parameter is perhaps the most uh, cryptic, is a spectral quantity. Well, it's what it is, the second moment divided by the first, uh, it appears in the work of Sales, uh, for it's related to the entropic time. Um, anyhow, we have these four parameters, uh, a function of the degree sequence you choose, and we did prove uh, that uh, the meeting time uh, essentially converges uh, divided by n times this functional of the degree sequence to this exponential. 
And in particular, now we can uh, add to this literature that uh, we can understand how random walks meet in this sort of geometry with high probability. And, um, and that's the content of our paper. Very, very long because it's very technical, the proof, I invite you to look at it. But uh, now I'm not sure if I have time to discuss the proof or some aspect of it. Uh, what I'd like to discuss is consequence from an applied audience of what we understand of random workflow in directed uh, network. Yep. So neither of these four quantities needs to be encouraged, but that combination. Not even, not even. Not even they the may even not converge. This ratio converts to an exponential. And uh, of course, if this converges, uh, then we can say even stronger that the meeting time divided by n converts to this number. That, that, that's a different. Yeah, thanks for the, the good point. All right, so now let me try to anal analysis of this constant, of this pre-constant, which uh, we can understand that, you know, how the random workflow in this sort of directed networks as a function of the degree structure we choose. So now the very first setup uh, that we can choose is the deregular setting. Let's see what is happening. Well, this functional, I told you, if you then uh, uh, go in certain setting, uh, collapse this awful functional in a very simple expression. That's what will happen, for instance, if you say deregular in and out directed. So in and out degree sequence, all equal to D. In this case, that functional becomes this number. And this number, then you are interested to ask, uh, uh, random walk will uh, uh, me, uh, meet faster in a directed or, or in an undirected geometry. Well, if you think intuitively, who has a guess? Precisely, and there is a very clear intuition why, because yes, in fact, this is the constant of Cooper and Fritz for the analogous oops, directed setting. Can you hear me? Yes. This is the analogous of, uh, yeah, this is the, the analogous for the undirected setting. And you see that for every d bigger than three, still this constant is smaller. So that means that you meet faster in this directed setting. Uh, because if you like, in the undirected setting, the random walker can go backward uh, and they can lose much time instead in a directed setting when they are pointing to each other. Go, be my friend, let's meet. And uh, that's a bit of the intuitive picture. Uh, still, uh, as Renko was saying before, uh, there's a delicate part because in this directed setting, uh, in reality, it's not true when you say the regular, in the irregular and uh, out the regular means there are two D uh, uh, degrees. So I'm not sure if that's the proper way to compare it with the undirected. So, but still, it's true also the, the, that in case you compare this constant for the directed setting, with the analogous undirected with 2D, it's still true that uh, this uh, random walk in the directed setting is faster than in the, the undirected one. So, argue this is unfair comparison. How does it relate to Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not answering this question because you know we are working on the. Speech time is normal. And it is, and I would be curious that that's a good point. I didn't check. I, I'm curious to see how it's compared. Anyhow, let me go on, please. But, but good point let, to be compared also with the non back I didn't know it's a specific. Yeah, Sorry? Can one just think of undirected graph and directed graph? No, that's slightly different. Uh, that's the point. Uh, it's slightly different. Well, there are certain similarities, depends what you're looking for. Uh, uh, well, if you put uh, all uh, the, if you like, if the, all the directed you place exactly one and one, uh, it uh, would be equivalent to the directing. Uh, and now let me move out of the regular case uh, and uh, see something else. So what happens in the non-regular case? Well, the easiest setting is let's consider only out the regular, but in degrees, let's vary it now. Let's start to consider really non-regular thing. 
And this constant in this setup becomes an explicit number, which is between zero and the number in the D regular. So that means as soon as you start adding some uh, non-homogeneity in the in degree, you can design the network so that the random walk flow will meet as fast as you like. So you can re-approach zero even. So this is something a bit uh, that we were a bit surprised to see, but that's exactly what this, don't ask me exactly why, we see it out of the uh, explicit combinatories. Well, in a, let's see if I can give you some hint of why perhaps this is the case. But this is an interesting thing that, you see, among the out the regular, the D regular is the slowest. So adding variability uh, speed up the meeting. And uh, uh, similarly, when we play with in D regular, and then now we, we let uh, get free and non-regular the out degrees. But there's something different even here that still we are faster than the deregular case is always smaller or equal, but we have a threshold that we cannot beat. So you cannot, uh, we, if you only play with the out degree, uh, uh, the random walk flow can be speed up uh, the meeting, but, but there's uh, some out threshold. Don't ask us why, <laughs> but that's what it comes out of this formula. Uh, perhaps something to be understood more. And uh, uh, last, well, not last, let me say a few more things. So Eulerian case, the Eulerian case is a matter of uh, where you kind of uh, say symmetry only per node. Each node has the same in and out degree, but across individuals in the population, let's open up whatever volatility. So different degree sequences. And again, well, the number becomes a bit more complicated here, this formula. But again, uh, as soon as you add variability in the way we socialize uh, across individuals, uh, 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 meeting becomes faster. And again, the out regular is the slowest. Um, I would say this is also an interesting thing. So having more variability speed up the meeting. And last but not least, uh, the general formula. Can you construct a graph as close to zero? If you like, yes. Yes, that's precisely what this is telling you. In fact, this is of interest for a network designer, if you like, also. Uh, uh, and perhaps this is uh, uh, an observation of the general formula that, OK, you can rewrite it in this form where this is a complicated object of this uh, row, whatever. Uh, but if you measure this parameter alpha, that is a measurement of how much are anti-correlated in and out degrees. Uh, so this number is between one and infinity. One is the case Eulerian. So same in and out degree per individual. Uh, then this uh, formula takes this shape. And in particular, we see in general, actually this was uh, also conjectured by physicists uh, from some simulation, and they didn't have precisely this conjecture, uh, but almost, and we made this precise, if you like, that uh, in this certain setting, uh, that's how it scales uh, uh, the, 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 the speed up of the flow to random walk meeting. And the conclusion is, uh, if you like, in general, uh, when you play with this uh, sparse directed setting, is that I think this is a truly an inclusive statement. <laughs> the more diverse we are in the way we socialize uh, per in and out and across individuals, the better it is for the information to flow and to achieve consensus. So I think this is also an inclusive message, <laughs> but uh, that's what it comes out of this uh, analysis and what you can see on this formula. All right, that's all I wanted to say for uh, the result. And now perhaps uh, five minutes, uh, I uh, let me sketch some of the ideas of the proof. Uh, uh, Rajat and Federico are laughing because five minutes, yes, this I prepare slide for another 40 minutes, you know, but <laughs> no, I want to perhaps uh, sketch the main idea and the main, uh, uh, perhaps one aspect. It's very technical and it's divided in several steps. Uh, let me discuss, just highlight uh, in these slides what's the main philosophy, which is typical for all these uh, voter dynamics uh, in this graph. First of all, uh, we want to study meeting time of two random walks. Uh, 
And uh, this, if you consider uh, the product graph, you may transform it in a question about hitting time of a random walk to the diagonal. In the sense, uh, you consider the product graph, and uh, in this large space, uh, the diagonal would be the points that are x, x. So the, 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 that's where the two random walk meet. That means that they are the same node x. So in this product graph, you can uh, translate the question of meeting into a question of hitting time of a Markov chain, of a product chain on a bigger graph, on the product graph. Then, uh, so this is a very standard approach. Uh, uh, and then transforming this meeting question into a question about the eating times of another Markov chain. And then the uh, question is, how do you control explicitly eating time of a Markov, finite Markov chain in a precise sense? Uh, well, there are several tools and there are several frameworks. Uh, and actually, Aldous, uh, worked, uh, uh, Aldous like clamping heuristic, made clear many years ago how should we reason with these models to try to uh, put the finger on the law of eating time of finite Markov chain. And recently, there has been a number of work, in particular, Cooper and Fritz introduced a version of this Aldous clamping heuristic for a finite state space Markov chain when you are interested in eating from stationarity a singleton, not a set. Right? So you have a Markov chain starting from invariant measure. You're interested in what's the law of the eating time of a given set, a point. And there is a special first visit time lemma that actually Matteo, uh, Scopola, and other people, Manzo, they reproved recently in a very neat form, and that's the form we used, uh, to put the finger on this eating time. And essentially, uh, okay, it's a result about spectral result that tells you that if you can control the return time, the green function of the random walk, uh, at, this, at the target point up to the mixing time, then you are in business and your eating time will be uh, an exponential random variable with an explicit constant. So that's morally the idea. I'm not sure if you have understood, but I tried to, for the expert that can follow, give you this. And then once you have the eating time low, then uh, there are very different technical problems. This result is known when you, the, explicit, the, the invariant measure is explicit. Uh, though in this case, we don't have an explicit invariant measure. More than that, our invariant measure is random and depends on the random graph realization. So in this work, there are major technical problems in trying to uh, first prove the result for a deterministic, actually for the Eulerian case, where the invariant measure, we know how it is, and then to extend it via concentration for the more general setting that I described you before, in which the invariant measure is random. And we do some local exploration process uh, to construct. Uh, uh, that's a beautiful thing in a random graph and random walk in random environment. This type of, if your underlying geometry, it's amenable for, for instance, as some exchangeable structure like in the configuration model, uh, when you want to sample a part of the local graph and a random walk, what you could do is to explore it locally step by step together. You do one step of the, you, you are from a node, you want to take a random walk step, you first ex uh, uh, link your node to your first one neighbor, and then you do the random walk step. And then you proceed and you explore a second level of the neighbor and you do a random walk step. You can do it in several flavors. This is classical. And, but in this setting, it's truly delicate because we don't know the invariant measure. We have to concentrate this type of results. But we did. I invite you to read this, uh, this type of proof. And then, uh, yeah. So, and that's the thing. And, uh, and in fact, at the end of the day, we are... Uh, studying the return of this uh, complicated Markov chain on a given state, uh, it's a matter of constructing a special rooted uh, uh, random forest that, uh, that encodes to all the combinatorics uh, from which we came out of this formula. In fact, let me perhaps finish jumping out to this. This is all I've been saying uh, very quickly in words uh, what I want this first visit time lemma and uh, number of things on concentration, but I don't want to discuss that now. Let me just telling you uh, an idea on why uh, we can have the explicit formula in this directed setup. 
So the graph is directed locally. The mixing is of order log n. So we can really use the, uh, the local weak limit that we are on a, local, on a local tree. And the point is when two random walkers are in the same point, we have to, let's say we are interested in the probability that they will meet again after four steps. What can happen? Well, you, they start from a given node. Then what can happen? You create locally the neighbor of that node. And let's say one of the two walker goes there. That's the first step of one of the two walker. Now, if you want to compute the probability that they will meet after four step, there's no way for the walker, for the second walker, it has to cheese him. Because if it goes here, then it's on another branch of a tree and they will never meet again until mixing. So they have to meet on the same, they have to follow each other on the same one dimensional uh, branch of the tree. And that's precisely what is happening. And that's all the combinatorics that produce Catalan numbers. And then you can get out of this generating function and get the formula I showed you. So for instance, they meet in four steps. So that's what they do. They, 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 for this event, in this case, you're forced. One of the walker has to do the first move. The same walker has to do the, set, the other move. Otherwise, they could not meet in four steps. Because if the other guy went there, gone, they will not meet again. If the other guy was following him, they would have met in two steps. So the only way here is that the first guy does two steps ahead and the guy chases him until after first step, they are on the same point. So this is okay, the building block of all these combinatorics. And if you do it more generally, you compute explicitly the probability of having eating time after two T steps then it appears a this covenant like number because what you have to think is you have to play a price for producing a branch of the tree of size 2t, of size t. And then this combinatorial factor is simply counting how many cheesing strategy you have on this one directed line. And that's it. So that's a bit of the history, uh, the intuition of what is happening on this directed geometry to meet. And uh, having said so, uh, I think I can stop here and thank you for your attention. So thank you, Luca. So a plural society will be more efficient. What? Uh, a plural what society will be more efficient. Seven, Very good. Uh, that's one of the main messages. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, so... I'm going to have to ask about this very stringent cons uh, constraint on the maximal degree, right? So from the formula you presented, I would imagine that something like a uh, sort of a finite second moment should potentially be enough to get some results. Or are there some very specific steps in the, yes. in the techniques you do where you, where you heavily, where you basically can't do something with, uh, with only finite second moments? True. So there are several steps like that, but precisely that's the case. So first of all, uh, these results on controlling the invariant measure, they are not known uh, in general under the assumption, you would say, second moment. Okay. That's one of the crucial steps we needed, but these people are working now and extending, in fact, recently they extended to slightly more than uh, bounded uh, degree, but still uh, not enough uh, to require only second moment. That perhaps, the major uh, uh, result that is still not at disposal, that perhaps you're right, it's true more generally, but uh, to prove it, uh, uh, this type of results are based on uh, path counting uh, and uh, becomes horrible under the assumption you would dream that perhaps you're right. And this perhaps uh, answer your question because uh, the others, uh, yes, uh, should be true. I think that for the other, this is perhaps the, the, the most crucial uh, result that is not at disposal under the minimal assumption you would like. Perhaps it's true, by the way, it's still the very same formula. Under finite variance, at least. Sure. Okay. Questions? But you, you were saying that none of your parameters about it has to converge. So doesn't that somehow include part of what PIM 
wants because you said none of yeah, these yeah, things yeah. have to be it's, it's, it's yeah. all going to be hidden in that formula that you so 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 this might be doing something unusual yeah well it's a, it's a it's a different thing yeah uh, okay so, yeah. yeah okay the point is under the assumption i'm stating this is an order one constant now it can still oscillate you don't know and uh, if you scale it with these possibly oscillating things, uh, this converge. Uh, the point is uh, whether this converge or not uh, to a constant is a matter of the regularity of the degree sequence. Okay. So beta explodes right then. It's, uh, it's going to be pushed to zero. If you like. Yeah, it might go to zero, for instance. Yes, you don't know in general. Or simply oscillate. Okay, thank you, Luca. We're going to. Yeah.